Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel and welcome to day 10 of May I Scrap With You and it is the second Friday of the month so Chris from Christian Crafts, Mel, Mel W Scrapping and myself we come to you with uh, all about the base so go to designs um, which make uh, sometimes when we have a little bit less time to do our scrapbooking, if we have a little bit of a library or some of our own go-to designs, it makes creating a page simpler and faster. And which reminds me, because you can also use, of course, base pages, because you could make a lot of these designs without the photos, uh, without all of the embellishing, and just sort of have some of the basics of that ready to go which reminds me there is an awesome series, my friends, that you must go over and watch, which is by Donna, uh, Scrapping in the, in the Sticks, here on YouTube. It is an amazing series where she takes us through a lot of base pages early on that she makes. Then she has a binder full of base pages, and in the subsequent videos, she chooses sort of two or three of those base pages and completes the layouts with us. And it's incredible how quickly she can get some of those lovely memories in books by having those base pages available. So I will, of course, I will have her channel down below as well as everything else today. So of course we have a playlist for It's All About the Base. That will be down below. Chris's channel, Mel's channel. And today I am scrap lifting the lovely Tara uh, from the Paper Snob here on YouTube and Kryptonite underscore 72 over on Instagram. The base design or the go-to design that we are focusing on this month is a grid. So I went into Tara's Instagram to find a grid and lo and behold, she had made this gorgeous layout very, very recently. All right, so I'm going to use my collection obsession. I have two photos here, um, just as Tara does in her layout. Now, these are the original photos. These are in July, 1955. And this is my parents' uh, first house. This is the house that I was born in and uh, I was raised here until about the age of maybe eight, nine. Um, and then I've also, I think I showed you that in another video, but I, I went on to Google and I found a picture of what that house looks like today. And I might do a companion page to this, but everybody here is sort of very far away. I guess they were trying to show the house. This is my uh, mom and dad and this is evidently my mom's brother and his wife visiting. And I, I, I think that they may have been, um, my uncle, uh, uncle Gilles and his wife Claire, they may have been on their honeymoon because I believe they, they did get married in 1955. My parents got married in 1953. So I took a photo of these and then, um, sort of cropped them a little bit and brought them so that you could see the people a little bit more. But at the end of the day, I'm really not sure whether I should just crop this, but I do want to see a little bit of the car, but I do find this a little bit dark. So just before continuing, I might go try and brighten these up a little bit. The resolution is not very good. So one way or another, these photos are not amazing, but I want to get that story. Uh, in my in my albums and maybe in Mum's album, uh, uh, which eventually will will come back to me. So we'll see. But here we go. So I'm going to use these two photos. Now I have, um, of course, because if you if you look in two, okay, let's start with the background. So I think I'm going to use this lovely. Uh, paper as my background and I'm going to cut it down the way Tara has done hers, distress it a little bit. So it looks to me like she probably did uh, maybe 10 by 10 uh, or maybe 10 and a half by 10 and a half kind of thing. So I'm going to put that down, put that on white cardstock. Then I have these 
two scraps from uh, the layout that I did of my parents' wedding, which I think I could use as the squares because I, you need some bright colors, I find, with black and white photos. So I think I will probably use these two as the squares. Now, up in the corner here, uh, Tara has a journaling card, um, but she does also put a square. So we have this kind of part sheet, but I also have over here in my Coco Vanilla, I have a lot of other uh, journaling cards if I don't find what I want here. But I do think that I have uh, enough on this page. And what I like is there are, of course, some smaller, there's some strips here, uh, some labels, a camera strip, because over on the top right is where Tara put her title. And this is sort of like a, a little embellishing square. So we have an embellishing square, two photos with just a tiny, a teeny little bit of embellishing, and then a journaling block over there. So I'm thinking I could maybe use uh, this or something like this for my journaling. I think I actually like this one and I could pop it on top of this so it would give it a good contrast. I could use some of these lovely little strips here. So um, I love this story so much. Memories are made of this. Um, I never want to forget, so these could go with some of the photos. So I think I have enough here to get that done. And then I will pop in to uh, the die cuts that I have here to do a little extra embellishing. Okay, my friends, so now that we sort of have the basic supplies chosen, let me go off, let me cut down the background, distress it, get my uh square is cut out and I will come back and we will finish this one together okay my friends so I got the base of this layout down on paper now you'll notice that in the end I changed my background I went to my Bella Boulevard besties the blueberry I believe it's blueberry as opposed to the gorgeous cocoa vanilla paper I had I felt this read a little bit more as a solid and wasn't quite as busy for my background. So I cut it down to uh, 10 and a half by 10 and a half. That is what I chose to do in the end as opposed to the 10 by 10. And I do like that um, more of the paper uh, is showing than when I thought of doing maybe 10 by 10. So, um, I inked the edges of the white cardstock in Midnight Muse. I did distress this background paper the way Tara did, um, and I inked it as well. Tara uh, distressed all of her lovely squares. I didn't go that far, but I did ink my squares, so I'm not quite as patient, I suppose. So I got that down matted my photos, popped them on here the way Tara did. And this, I think, will be my little journaling block. But I want to replicate um, a little bit the height that Tara has on her layout here. So I've taken a couple of things out. I have this tag, this top of a tag in my scrap bowls. And you see, if I pop that here, I kind of like the idea of that. Now, Tara has her journaling that goes up, and it even goes up above um, the background paper. But I think because maybe mine is a little bit bigger or my squares are a little bit smaller, I'm not quite sure, um, it will just go up onto the background paper, which is fine uh, by me. So I quite like that. Now I was thinking I might do something like that instead of putting some twine. But then I have this die cut as well. And I'm just wondering whether that 
no, I don't like that. That's, that's sort of like too much. So there you go. Oh, unless I put, my friends, ah, maybe I could put a tab there. Now, I have this ticket. Would that be cute? I brought it down a little bit further. Oh, there you go. I do kind of like that. Okay, and then maybe I'll just put uh, a little heart here. That could be cute. Or I have some bramble fox bits that I brought out here. A couple of bramble fox stars. Would I put that there? No. But okay, I think I do like this. All right, let's do that before we change our minds. All right, let's get that down. Now, there are so many ways. I've gone a very traditional way with my grid as Tara did on her layout. Uh, but there are so many different ways that you can create uh, a grid. I can't wait to see what um, Mel and Chris do. Chris tends to be quite creative with um, some of her go-to designs. So, I mean, you can do all sorts of things. There's all, you, could, you could just do your photo sort of in a grid and Dorothy does that beautifully often with companion pages where she does um, landscape portrait landscape portrait and it turns into a lovely little grid with some embellishment in the middle that's a fun idea okay so I have that down and I do like that now we still need to see what we're going to do there ah maybe a little button well, that could be cute because now I'm thinking that a flare here might be a little bit too big. Oh no, that might be nice. Let's leave it there while we think of it. Now, out of my lovely bowl here, my tray here, I got a few other bits and pieces and the chipboard. I've got a lot of the chipboard in here and I sort of looked at this and I thought, I think that would be kind of cute. I, I kind of like that. Um, I also brought this camera, which I thought I might put there, but then that's starting to be a little heavy. Unless I put this up here, but then you see, I find that just blends in with the background. I have this card, which I think I might want to put there together with let me tell you a story. I think that might be nice with this. Yeah, I do think I like that. Okay, so I think I'm going to ink this a bit and then we'll see what else we put on this. Now, um, I, was t I just gave you a little bit of the facts and those are facts that I can just tell from the photos because uh, it's 1955. So my parents had not been in this house for very long, for sure. They got married in September of 53. Um, now I'll have to ask mom exactly when. They got married in Montreal, but my dad got transferred to Toronto almost immediately. So I'll have to ask my mom how long they had been in the house, but I don't think it was, uh, this is July. Of 55 so probably not even a year I'm not sure I'll have to ask for that but I do know that's my uncle and his wife visiting um, I'll have to ask her if there was uh, a, a, an occasion other than the fact that you know they had not been married married very long was it perhaps their honeymoon I'm not sure so I'll have to ask her that so that I can get my journaling in here let me Pop this here, snap happy, then we will get this on top. There we go, and it goes up just a little, let me maybe put it a little teensy bit higher. There we go, so that it goes over a little bit as well. Now, I think here I'll put a little bit of dimension. Will I put maybe 
a butterfly there. Oh, he's cute. Or a flare. No, I don't want a flare. I think I like the butterfly better. There we go. Yeah, I have another one here. Yeah, that's too big. So, okay, so we're going to put that there. Gives a little bit of dimension. Okay, there we go. The glue on here is pretty good, but you know what? I'm just going to add a touch more. So let's pop that there. Then we'll see what else we might want to put. Now, I do think I like that. So I think I am going to pop that there and might not need much of anything else on that photo. So a grid can sometimes give you the occasion of sort of almost doing four little mini layouts, which I think is kind of fun. Let me bring that over here. I'm going to bring that up a little bit. So again, we have the flower here that's just popping up on top and into the background a little bit. And then I think I might just put a heart down here that could be fun over on this side now Tara puts a little bit of sort of word phrases kind of thing so I was trying to replicate that do I want to add a couple more florals there that might be a little too much don't you think how about if I put them there oh that could be fun but I also had where did I put that? Um, I had put some word phrases. I put a little word phrase there. What did I do with it? Oh, maybe I put it here. Okay, maybe. Hmm. Hang on, my friends. Back in a sec. Okay, my friends. So I didn't find those little bits, but... Uh, somehow my camera cut off for a couple of minutes there, so you missed me sort of checking to find what I would put there in these little florals. And I kind of like them, and I think I'm going to put them like that so that I don't have that sticking out. Let's do something like that, and I do think I like that. All right, there we go. Okay, so we have our butterfly. I am going to put this little heart down here. Yeah, I can do that. To get that here. There we go. Now you see I'm looking at this and I have the wood buttons. So I'm wondering whether um, I might not prefer... Uh, a wood button. They're a little bit smaller. That's too small. Smart. Maybe the camera. Love. How about if I put that? Okay. No. Actually. All right, my friends. I like having the flare. So let's just do it. There we go, and pop that there. Okay, so I think that finishes that off. I think we're good here. We have a couple of florals here, nice little embellishing. And then if you notice, um, and I only noticed this afterwards, Tara's got some fun uh, little tickets popped under uh, between her background paper and the background to the grid. So I just took this was one of the journaling cards and inked it and popped that underneath. Now, I'm wondering, do I need anything else? This I definitely don't. Do I want anything here? Maybe fun day. Yeah, let's put that there. Give a little bit of dimension over on this side as well. And there you go, my friends. I think that will take care of this one. 
Thank you, Tara, so, so much for the lovely inspiration for um, a go-to grid design. Uh, make sure you are following Tara, of course, Paper Snob, the Paper Snob. I will have that down below. Make sure you pop on over and see what Mel and Chris have for you as far as their grid layout for today. I will have that playlist uh, down below as well as the May I Scrap Lift you. So I will see you back here very, very soon, my friends. And have a wonderful, wonderful, scrappy day if you're scrapbooking today. Talk to you soon.